A short while ago I received an email from Eligu and they said, Geek, we would love to send you some goodies. What do you think? And I, of course, said, yeah. And two weeks later, I received these goodies in the mail. It was an Eligu Mars 4 Ultra 9K 3D printer, as well as a washing machine and a curing station. It was great timing because I'd been struggling getting rid of the printing lines from my current printers. Elegoo was very kind in sending me these two bottles of resin as well. This printer will work with the majority of the resins available on the market. The wash and curing machine come in the same box and they've called it the Mercury X bundle. Now it was time to have a look what's inside the box. First of all, opening up the uh, 3D printer box. And the first impression was it was really well packed, lots of solid uh, reinforcements around the edges. And I've got to admit, it's a great looking printer. I love the style of it. I also love the color of it. It had lots of foam um, in the box to keep it protected. And also you get the little box of goodies, you know, basically the usual stuff that you get with all the printers. The operating manual, that's the leveling card uh, that I'll show you how to use a little bit later. Five resin filters. Couple of masks. Also some rubber gloves. This is something I haven't seen before. This is an air filter to go inside the machine. Some hex keys to level out the build plate. Also a USB stick that holds some of the software. This is the power supply. And also a scraper just in case it all goes wrong inside the vat. It's a really, really nice machine. A USB port at the back of it, and that's where the filter goes. This unit's got some really great specs behind it. It's a 9K mono screen, seven inch, high speed Wi-Fi transfer, so you don't have to run around with a USB stick, COB light source, which is a circuit on board, and a four inch touch screen, which is an IPS screen. Now we've got everything unpacked, let's start setting up the machine. First thing we need to do is raise the build plate holder. And there it is there with a great little volume of 153 by 77 and 165. It may seem obvious, but please don't forget to take off the plastic from the build plate. Now what I liked about this particular machine is the size of that knob to hold on the build plate. It's got a nice solid feel to it and really easy to screw on. So using the hex key, it was um, a matter of loosening up these four bolts, two on each side, and you just loosen up so it's, well, really loose and it flops around. Again, protective film, don't forget to take that off the screen. You can use a leveling card or a piece of paper that's been folded in half, like the copy paper, and then it's a matter of bringing down the build plate back to zero. Once it reaches the level of the screen, it will slowly bounce and work out where the position is. And as soon as it stops, you can then tighten the bolts. What I did was tighten one bolt on each side, then went back and tightened all four bolts. Once you're happy with that, go back to the touchscreen and then raise the build plate. This next step caught me by surprise. The vat uses a very different type of film. As you can see, it's clear but as soon as I rip off the protective film, it goes cloudy. Now what that is, it's designed for the high speed printing. So I'm gonna give that a test in a future video. The vat can only be placed in one way. There are four uh, bolts at the bottom and they lock into some points on the actual machine. Once it pops into there, just a couple bolts and that locks it down and it ain't gonna go anywhere. The main differences between this machine, the Ultra and the Mars 4, is the Wi-Fi, also the interface of the touchscreen. And the final thing to add to the printer was this air filter. Now that just plugs into the USB port that's at the back, and I showed that earlier. And just like any USB port, you do have to spin the device around three, four times before it actually slots in. And the other difference between the Ultra and its predecessor is the predecessor had a red lid, this one's got a black one. With the printer all done, let's move on to the wash and cure machine. And it's interesting they actually call it a machine when there's actually two machines in the box. They must have been trying to save some money in printing the S. 
Again, very well packed, lots of foam to keep everything into place. On top is the operational manual. First thing I noticed as I slid the machine out of its packing box is how big it actually is. This machine, the curing machine, is more than enough to be able to print anything that comes out of the Mars 4 Ultra. And you can just see the wash machine bucket just sticking out of the lid of the curing machine. So they've been able to pack it all very well into the one box. Now this bucket is 7 litres so it can hold quite a fair bit of IPA or if you're using a different type of resin, 7 litres of water. First thing I realised when I pulled out these UV lamps for the curing machine is yep, I'm going to have to do some assembling. This is the base for the wash machine and it's driven by magnets. With all the components laid out, it was time to start assembling. Now, first impression of this particular base for the curing machine was how light it was. Even though it was made out of plastic, it still felt rigid. The lamps do have to go onto a specific way. The one with the markings needs to go on the left hand side because it works in a serial, I believe, that's what it is. So you've got to install that one first and then do the right hand one. Very straightforward, it's pretty much plug in and almost play. These plugs are different sizes so you can't mix them up and then you put in I think it's five screws. Everything's provided in the box so that's pretty much straightforward and well foolproof. Both units were really simple to assemble and I think it took me about 10-15 minutes to get it all together and as a typical bloke I didn't even look at the instructions. This is the bottom of the bucket and that's the paddle that runs by magnets. I'm a big fan of the simplicity of the design. Both units have the simple knob design on the front. I found this to be a bit of a strange choice. This is the power supply for both units. So it's one power plug and then you've got two leads coming out of that one unit. So the machines have to be next to each other. You have no choice unless you buy a separate power supply. Now with all that done, it's time to do a test print. Now I'm using this little um, model, it's called a Dan test. And if I remember where I got it from, I'll leave the link in the description. Stuck that onto a USB stick after I'd set it up in Chitterbox. I really like the interface of this Elegoo printer. It's very simple and intuitive. It's got some great information on there. It's nicely laid out and the quality of the screen is really sharp. Gives me a whole bunch of information. My first test print was at a two second exposure and oh, it's just way, way under. And you can see some of those fine lines just fell apart. And some areas didn't even appear. I'm missing like two crosses there that just didn't come out at all. Next test print was at four seconds and they only take about 30 minutes to print, so very quick to set up. Much better, but I'm still kind of missing some bits and pieces there. Uh, the lines on both sides of that bar were missing, so not quite uh, there yet. And um, my crosses are all back, but some of uh, just the details seems to be a bit thick, not quite sharp enough. So the next test, we moved on to 4.5 uh, seconds exposure. The connecting point on that infinity symbol was much sharper, plus my little uh, stripes reappeared, my little fine bars. Unfortunately, my recess crosses still aren't sharp enough. So I moved up to five seconds for the exposure and it kind of probably went a little bit far. Um, my, yeah, my lines are there, but they feel a little bit thicker and the center is starting to move uh, way in the wrong direction. No help on those recess crosses either. So out of curiosity, I thought, you know, what I might do is I'll go to the next step, which was six. And that's a six second exposure. Now, I knew what was gonna happen anyway. Everything's gotten really thick. A lot of the fine details disappeared. So I kind of need to reevaluate and go the other way. Even though I knew that a five second exposure was too much, I was really curious to see what type of results I'll get at six seconds. But before I dialed back to 4.75 second exposure, I just wanted to compare the two differences between the 5 and the 4.5 exposures. Now the bottom one, which is now at the front, you can see it's a lot clunkier compared to the top one. 
The little squares seem to bleed into each other and they're not as sharp. The logic is we dial in between 4.5 and 5, which will be 4.75. Now, all that done, I went straight into printing a larger scale print. And um, this particular print was uh, one that I got from Loot, and it's like a post apocalyptic survivor. And it took about 18 hours to print at exposure time of 4.75 seconds and a layer height of 0 0.025. Once the wait was over for that 3D print, it was time to wash and cure the model. Off screen, I'd wash most of the resin off with some older IPA, then place it into this bucket. And to get this started, it's just a matter of holding the button down on the front of the knob, and that initiates the unit, turning it to, well, I'll roughly wash it for about eight minutes and let it go through the cycle. Once the machine starts up, the paddle spins one direction, then after a few minutes slows down and spins in the opposite direction, so it gives it a really good wash. This IPA can be nasty, so please wear protective gloves when you're doing this. Now this next step is some hot water from the tap, and I place the model in that water for about 15-20 oh, seconds, and that softens it up, and I use a scraper just to push it slightly off the plate, and a larger scraper, as you can see, just pops it right off really easy and the hot water softened the supports and they just break off really easily the curing machine has a really decent sized plate on it it's about 190 mil in um, width the unit also has a uv bar just underneath the turntable and just like the wash machine the unit is controlled by this turning knob and i usually cure for about four minutes one thing surprised me was how slow it actually turns it takes about a minute and a half to do a full turn of that turntable. And I kind of thought if you have a small figure and you're only curing for a couple of minutes, it only goes over that light bar once. So I came up with a bit of a solution for that. I used my laser cutter and uh, I cut out this little acrylic mirror and that just pops straight in there. And the whole idea of this is just to reflect all the UV light consistently under the 3D print. My concern was simply with the smaller prints that don't take as much curing time that it wasn't getting enough UV light on it. Pretty straightforward, you just take off the plate and the mirror just pops on top. After testing this a number of times on some smaller figures, I was much more confident in, in the prints coming out with a nice even curing on it. Pretty happy with the results. Good news is, this mirror will be available on my Etsy store and I'll leave the link in the description. And you can see in the video how much more UV light's been bounced around inside the chamber. With the printing all done, let's see how well it did. I'll be comparing the prints between the Elegoo Mars 4 Ultra as well as the Anycubic Mono X. Now you can see on the left hand side how much more crispy Elegoo is. Where the tears are on his pants, a lot more detail has appeared, as well as the lack, or rather the complete lack, of any printing lines on the Elegoo. Next, I wanted to test how much detail I could get out of the print. So, I used this figure from Loot, which has a lot of fine detail, and it was a six hour print, and check out the detail between the two. The Elegoo on the left is so much crisper and cleaner, as well as no print lines as well. This is the benefits of having 9K on a smaller screen because the pixels are smaller. So your detail is really sharp and crisp. I was so happy with the results that I couldn't wait to start printing a whole bunch of figures. This zombie is also from Loot and check out the detail in his pants. And the shredded uh, flesh there, it looks so nice and crisp. This figure also from Loot just has some wonderful detail that really pops from the printing on the Elegoo Mars 4 Ultra. So happy with the results of this. In summary, would I recommend this? What, the video didn't give it away? I loved it, I thought it was a great printer. 9K on a smaller screen gives you such sharp details. It's fantastic and the layer lines, the fact they were totally eliminated is a big winner for me. I do a lot of mechs and I do a lot of prints that have a lot of flat surfaces on them. And the fact that I no longer have printer lines, that's a big win. 
The washing machine is fantastic, works really well. I love the knob on there, very simple to use. My only gripe would be probably with the curing machine one, as I mentioned, the reflective surface. I think just having that one UV bar to the side is a bit of a problem when you do smaller figures that don't need that much time to cure. So the reflective plate I think is a big help. And also how light it is. Unless it's on a nice solid surface where the, um, the rubber feet grip onto the surface, when you push the button it kind of pushes the unit back a bit. But they're my only gripes, it still works well. It's a good looking unit and yeah, you can't really go wrong with it. I would totally recommend these to a, a beginner as well. The units are very simple to assemble and I didn't even read the instructions and I got through the interface really easily. The interface is very intuitive, it gives you a whole bunch of information and it's really, really simple to use. So what can I say? A couple of thumbs up for this unit. And now, Go and check out these two videos that I've created.